The police chief stopped me on my way in today and he told me that if I give a good introduction, no more speeding tickets for the rest of the year. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't do that. But seriously, you know, uh, every February we look to Punxsutawney Phil to come out and give the forecast for the coming spring and year. But if you're like me, I look forward to February so that I can come here and have our mayor give us her forecast for the coming year for the city of Pointsburg. You know, as business leaders, we face a lot of challenges and a lot of changes, and we've certainly had that in the last few years with our economy, and our cities are really no different. Our cities face a lot of challenges and change, and we've had that experience here definitely in the last few years with the departure of Chrysler. And I think that, you know, there's a difference between being responsive and being reactive. And in this city, we've been able to be responsive. And I think the difference between those two comes from leadership. Now, some years back, one of my bosses said to me, you know, the, the true definition of a leader is not someone that just does analysis and does research and has strategic planning, but someone that takes an action step that makes things happen. And when I think about that, I think about our mayor. She makes things happen. She's a very seasoned executive with over uh, 15 years now in her fourth term as mayor. Um, she has been living in the city 37 years, and I have to say in that 37 years, she's probably seen very significant changes. I know just in a few years, our company's been here, I've seen a lot of changes. She's got strong experience with municipal government, and she's worked on an ongoing basis with not only, not only our local mayors, but mayors across the nation. But she doesn't manage the city from behind her desk. She's visible. She's out there. You see her picture in our chamber newsletter. She's there where business is happening. She has her finger on the pulse of the city, and that's why I'm excited to hear what she has to say today, and I know that you are too. It's time for the State of the City Address. Please help me welcome the Honorable Mayor of Catherine Prokop. Very, very nice introduction. I really appreciate it. Okay, very kind of you. Well, welcome everybody. It is really nice to see so many friends and my family here today. I always enjoy giving the State of the City address. I hope you didn't get too wet coming in, but I guess it's better than the whiteouts that we had a little bit earlier in the week. Stick around, those are probably coming back too. Um, this is my 2014 State of the City address. And I'm always very excited to talk about the city of Twinsburg. But before I begin, I would like to thank Roger Green and his staff here at the Hilton Garden Inn. They always have a wonderful luncheon for us. The staff is very gracious. The hospitality is wonderful. And I would like to thank them. I would also... I would also like to thank Tim Edgington from Edward Jones Investments. And if you're looking for a place for investment advice, I would highly suggest Tim Edgerton. Thank you, Tim, for sponsoring the State of the City again this year. I really appreciate it. And I would also like to thank the Twinsburg Chamber of Commerce for including the State of the City address in their schedule of luncheons for the year. With that, I would like to recognize Carolyn Lookabill. Carolyn was selected as the Twinsburg Chamber of Commerce Business Person of the Year this year. She is the Vice President and COO of Richter Healthcare Consultants. But besides being an excellent business person, Carolyn is a person with a big heart and helping hands. I have just been delighted in getting to know her over these last few years. When Richter & Associates moved to the city of Twinsburg, Carolyn jumped right in and got involved in the city, the Chamber of Commerce, and so many other organizations that give back to the city. And she's been instrumental in women's organizations and forming women's organizations. So Carolyn, thank you very much. Again, I am just delighted to have met you, met you and be recognized as one of your friends. This year, we're going to talk about Twinsburg in the news. We have so many things to be proud of that happened in 2013. So we're going to highlight a few of those. 
First of all, let's talk about Twinsburg being rated number 38 in the nation for being one of the most livable communities out of America's best small towns. Money Magazine recognized our very unique Twin State Festival and also the improving job market in the city of Twinsburg. They recognized some of our great institutions, Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, and even an expansion of Verizon Wireless. So this is quite an honor. We're very proud of it. And being number 38 out of all those small towns across the country truly is an honor. Also in the news, Twinsburg hosted the Cleveland Pops Orchestra last July. And that's something to be pretty proud of for a small town like Twinsburg to be able to bring the Cleveland Pops here to our Anthony Parisi Amphitheater. Uh, this is a great, great venue. A lot of people don't know about it. It's kind of a hidden gem in the city of Twinsburg. But anyway, Cleveland Pops came in and they rocked the park. They had a very patriotic program. It was July 5th and it ended with a fireworks display. They will be coming back to Twinsburg this year on July 11th. So I hope you can join us for that great program. And I'd like to thank Darren Schroeder, who really is instrumental in getting the Rock and Park Concert Series together. He's our Parks and Recreation Director. <laughs> also, Twinsburg was in the news. We received the 2013 Summit of Sustainability Award for the public sector. And out of everything that happened last year, I think this is my favorite because we have worked so hard on our green initiative in the city of Twinsburg. Our city staff and our community volunteers have worked tirelessly to make Twinsburg more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. And I am thrilled that we were honored for that hard work and dedication. We'll talk a little bit more about what we did with our green initiative. But one of the things that was pretty innovative is that we have transitioned our legislators and a lot of our staff members into using iPads. We used to create volumes of paper and, and paperwork and take lots of office time in preparing our legislation and packets. And now we use iPads. It has really cut down on our costs and our manpower. So that uh, award means a lot to me because uh, it's a, a great honor from the, the County of Summit and a very prestigious award. Happy about that one. Also, Twinsburg in the News. We were recognized, or at least our lifeguards were recognized, as state champions. And pictured here are Josh Fargo, Michael Sokolich, Maria Edom, and Mackenzie Harrison. They're pictured with Brandon Burns, our aquatic director. He's in the center there. They competed in Westchester, Ohio against 20 other lifeguard teams, and we came out the champs. They were the top scoring responders in emergency scenarios. And taking care of our residents, whether they're on the streets or in our swimming pools, is very important to us. So congratulations to our lifeguards. Also, Twinsburg in the news. This was probably the biggest headlines of the year. It's not very often that a local government reduces their city income tax. And that's a boom not only to our residents, but certainly to our businesses. Four years ago, we asked our voters to increase the city income tax from 2 to 2 and a quarter percent when Chrysler closed its doors. And our voters responded, and they voted to increase that tax. That time period over the last four years has really given us the opportunity to build our reserves. But our council did what they promised the voters they would do. They sent it back to the ballot last November, and the tax is rescinded. Our, our income tax now is once again 2%. And I am very proud of the city for keeping its word. I'm proud of our voters for supporting us when we needed that support. And I'm proud, proud of our government because, again, it's pretty unusual for a government to reduce taxes. But we did it right here in the city of Twinsburg. Also in the news. Three of our council people were re-elected to their council seats. That's Gary Seracy, Maureen Stauffer, Maureen's here today with us, and Seth Roden. Uh, they were up for re-election, and we're happy that the voters returned them to their positions. This is a great team. I'm very happy working with this team of council people. Our city representatives also include Sam Scavidi, Sam's here today, and Bob McDermott, Ted Yates, with us in the audience, and Bill Fury. 
Council members in December elected their council president. Maureen Stauffer was elected as president, and Sam Scabidi was elected as vice president. Congratulations to both of you. Our Twinsburg City Council members have adopted business-friendly policies of cooperation and expediency that have helped us to expand and grow the city's economic base. We are now the home of full, over 450 businesses. The job growth in Twinsburg has been pretty significant over the last year. Many of our companies have been expanding and adding jobs. Companies like Windstream, Verizon, Envision Pharmaceutical Holdings, Cleveland Clinic, AssureMed, Jazeki Debriant, RX Options, Lighting Cabinet Company. Others have also experienced significant growth or consolidated their operations in Twinsburg, resulting in more than 350 additional jobs from companies that are right here in our city. We also have new companies in our city, companies like Professional Plastics, SMC Design Dynamics, Myers Industries, and those companies have brought an additional 60 new jobs to the city of Twinsburg. Coming soon, we have two new companies opening up. The first is Davida Dialysis Center. This will be on Aurora Road at Commons Boulevard. It's a 6,500 square foot medical building that will serve primarily kidney dialysis patients. Also, on Darrow Road at East Highland, Manor Care is constructing its Heartland of Twinsburg, which is a skilled nursing facility. This will be a 64,300 square foot building that will provide 120 beds. When it is completed in the middle of 2014, they will employ as many as 140 workers. And now for a, an update on Cornerstone Business Park. Cornerstone Business Park is at the site of the old Chrysler stamping plant on 167 acres. Substantial deconstruction of the plant occurred last year. 2.2 million square feet, which was the entire building, has been removed. There's still some work to do. The um, concrete floors and the high bay basement has to be removed, but that work is, is going on right now. We were very, very fortunate that we were able to secure $5.2 million in grants. That came from the Job Ready Site Program and the CORF grant program. This really helped to ramp up the progress of this project. Twinsburg Industrial Properties, which uh, is the owner of the Chrysler site, or I'm sorry, Cornerstone Business Park, has committed an additional $14 million to prepare the site for market opportunities and to bring new business to the city of Twinsburg. This is really exciting for us and such an opportunity to turn lemons into lemonade. It, we're just really very, very excited when we'll be able to announce our first new business there. And Larry Finch, I'd like to thank you for helping to write all of those grants. Thank you very much. Also on the horizon, Metro Park serving Summit County is building a new nature center at the ledges area of Liberty Park. Liberty Park is our premier park in the city of Twinsburg, 900 acres. We're very, very proud of it. And Metro Park serving Summit County is our partner in building the amenities at that park. They've already installed a lot of hiking trails. Their newest project is going to be a 3,000 square foot nature center. It will also include a shelter, an amphitheater, and hiking trails for people of all abilities. I can't thank Keith Shy enough. He's the director of Metro Park Serving Summit County and the, the uh, commissioners, the park commissioners, for their dedication and their commitment to the city of Twinsburg and this park. They have purchased adjacent property to Liberty Park. So our 900 acres, when you include what Metro Parks has purchased, is almost a 3,000 acre regional park now. So congratulations to them. Also, Corbett's Farm. Here's an update on what's going on at Cor Corbett's Farm. We have a new residential development going in, and it will be called Corbett's Farm. It has 95 houses that will be constructed. The model homes will be uh, started in the spring. Of the 80 acres there, 20% of it will be open space. So we're very excited. If you're looking for a new house, you might want to check out Corbett's Farm this coming summer. I get lots of questions about what the city of Twinsburg looks like right now as far as population and 
The city is encompassed or encompasses 13.7 square miles, so that's how big we are. And according to the last census, we have a population of 18,795, but we truly believe it's about over 19,000 right now. Our households, 7,505 households, median home value over 205,000, median host household income over 69,000. Our residential property tax rate is 59.26 mills, which is one of the lowest in Summit County. The city receives very little in millage. We only get 2.2 mills of property taxes. Our income tax rate, again, is back to 2%. Our transient visitor tax is 3%. I'm also very proud of the fact that in the population age group of 25 years and older, 44% have bachelor or advanced degrees. And I think that is really, really great. And I think a big part of it is due to that within 20 miles of the city of Twinsburg, there are 12 colleges and universities. We're truly in a great location. And I see Dean David Mullen sitting there of our new Kent State Regional Campus, which has been a great boom for education in our city. Thank you, Dean. Turning now to our finance department. Last year, the city income tax revenue was $25.1 million. Our collections increased by over 8%. City income tax is 88% of our general fund revenue source. So again, city income tax is very, very important to us. General fund revenue is where we pay most of our bills and certainly our personnel expenses. And again, we get very little from uh, property taxes and permits and fees and things like that, so we really survive on our city income tax. However, our finance director, Karen House, has been preparing the council administration for a sharp decline in our 2014 revenue stream. Due to the um, reduction in our income tax, it looks like our 2014 income tax projection will be about $20 million. So as you can see, that will be a reduction of about $5 million this coming year, and again, attributed to the reduction in the income tax. This next graph shows the last 10 years of our beginning balances. As you can see, in 2004, our opening balance for that year was a little over $4 million. And again, this year in 2014, our opening balance was $26.8 million. Due to the expanding businesses, our efforts in economic development, the job growth in this community, we have really seen a steady increase in our beginning balances. We're very proud of that and have worked very, very hard to make this a business-oriented and business-friendly community. Now, we're probably not expecting $26.8 million for the opening balance in 2015, but nevertheless, um, I feel that we're in a real good spot right now. We are fortunate to have built up reserves, but we must continue to watch our pennies and keep our expenses down. State assistance from local government has declined 45% just in the last five years, and it continues to decline. Our operational expenses have increased with items like fuel and salt prices on the rise. And boy, we used a lot of salt this year. We have just enough to get us through a few more events. Let's hope we don't have to use it all. Also, our city's health care premiums are increasing by more than 27% this year. That's over $400,000, just an increase in our health care premiums. So things really are going up. Our spending practices continue to be cautious and conservative. Last year, the city spent $4.9 million less than its revenue collection, and we spent 5% less than our general fund appropriations. So again, we really watch our dollars and our pennies. The city's greatest resource, however, is its employees. And their most important role involves safety. Whether it's police, fire, engineering, wastewater service, or even our lifeguards at the swimming pool, safety is a big role for the city of Twinsburg. As you can see, our personnel expenses are the most expensive um, 
a biggest expense that we have out of our general fund. It's 58% of our general fund budget for about $13.8 million just for personal expenses. 27% of that goes for public safety and 9% for public works. In order to ensure that we continue to provide these valuable services, we continue to find ways to cut our expenses. And this is one of the ways that we're just about making up for the $400,000 increase in our health care premiums, we entered into a contract with waste management and we are saving $415,000 for the life of that contract. That's about $83,000 a year. And the way we did that was enter into automated trash collection for the entire city. The city now uses 96 gallon trash containers and 64 gallon recycle containers that allows for automated pickup. So this has really been a help for us. The city spends over $1.2 million just for trash pickup. So um, our 6,200 residential customers, this is a cost-free service to them. So this is a, a big help for us to be able to cut expenses. There's also an upside to this besides money. Since we started this program, we have increased our recyclable tonnage from our residents by over 200 tons in just nine months. Some of the most effective cost-saving measures that the city has implemented are energy-related. Back to our green initiative project again. Lighting retrofits in all of our buildings. Energy-efficient doors and windows were installed. We have the four or five hybrid cars. Might be four. Four hybrid cars. And we now, we now heat our outdoor water park, the swimming pool, with solar panel arrays. So we're saving energy there. Just those energy efficient changes that we made is saving the city over $165,000 a year in energy costs. Also, with the addition of the micro turbine and the wastewater treatment plant, which takes the byproduct of methane gas and turns it into energy, we are saving over $49,000 a year in energy costs there. That is over $200,000 we're saving in energy. A little cold here, I think. Grant funding is an important tool in the city's list of financial resources. Those green initiative projects that I just talked about, most of them were funded through stimulus money and grants. One of the grants that we received was for the intersection of Creekside and State Route 91. This project was over $812,000, but $500,000 of it was funded through the o ODOT Safety Program. So it, it's a tremendous thing when we can secure these grants, and Amy Moore in our en engineering department works very, very hard in getting any type of grant that has to do with maintenance, road work, installation, and she does a great job. We're also hoping to get a grant to repay that area on a State Route 91 right around uh, Creekside. So hopefully we'll be able to secure that grant in the future. Well, that's a big grant, but small grants are important to us too. And we received $20,000 from Project Clean Lake for the planting of over 200 trees in the city of Twinsburg. Many of those tree plantings are replacing trees that were infected by the emerald ash borer. All in all, the city completed over $3.2 million in capital projects last year, with $2 million being funded through grants. That means the city received 62 cents on every dollar that we spent. And again, it's a really great way to leverage our money. We make sure that whenever we have the opportunity to leverage our money and save money, that we take advantage of it. Of, the 50, of the, all the trees that we planted, we fit, planted 50 of those trees from the Relief Grant at Glen Eagles Golf Course. And again, a lot of these trees were replacing trees that were infected with the emerald ash borer. Some of them were new, new plantings. So they got a facelift over there at Glen Eagles Golf Course. And also they had some major improvements with the um, uh, repaving of the car paths on the back nine and also the relocation of some of their car paths between hole number 10 and 18. There were some safety factors there. We really relocated the paths. We now have safer play, better aesthetics, and a, a real nice facelift for the golf course. This is one of our 
famous golf courses in Northeast Ohio, he has great play and they do a great job out there on the course. Under the direction of Larry Finch, our Director of Community Planning and Development, the city's comprehensive plan is being finalized right now. Every five years, a resident commission is established. They review the comprehensive plan and make recommendations concerning land use, culture and environmental features, parks and open space, and they present those recommendations to our planning commission and to our city council for final approval. This year, a primary focus of the committee is the redevelopment of downtown Twinsburg. As you can see here, this is a concept plan that we have up here of what Twinsburg Square could look like. The uh, darker area right in the center is the actual grassy area of the Twinsburg Square. And the lighter green areas are areas that we're looking to redevelop. To help facilitate this project, a nonprofit business organi organization has been formed. It's called the Community Improvement Corporation. The board includes local business employees, a member of the school district, our council members Bill Fury, Sam Scafidi, and Ted Yates, department heads Karen House, David Maestros, Larry Finch, and myself. The CIC is currently interviewing development partners. The development partner will enter into a public-private contract for the southeast quadrant of the square with the goal of creating a walkable destination place for community activities. The uses will include residential, commercial, and retail. You know, we can take a look around and see that the area around the square is really underused and declining. It is in desperate need of new enterprise and activity. So this is a priority goal for the Community Improvement Corporation and also for the members of the Comprehensive Plan and our City Council. I'm hoping to get this project rolling out in the next few months. A few updates from our city departments. We, uh, we, we, had, we recognized several of our retirees. Bonnie Coachman, she worked for the city for 19 years. She started as a dispatcher, she moved into records, and then she worked for the fire department. Bonnie was a linchpin in all of those departments and just did a great job. Also, Tammy Depew, she was the executive secretary for four different police chiefs. And Tammy worked for the city for 30 years. Dave Smith was an integral partner, uh, I'm sorry, integral uh, person at the wastewater treatment plant. He worked there for 25 years. We also had the retirement of our canine, Nico. Nico worked in the police department for seven years with his handler officer, Brian Donato. So we wish all of them a successful and long retirement. The police department welcomed three new officers this year, Matt Pfeiffer, Ken Weinhardt, and Nicole Bond. So we're happy to have them on board. Craig Bremner was promoted to the rank of sergeant. I was very excited about this. I know that Craig's going to be a great sergeant. Detective Greg Kopninski has been assigned as our second school resource officer. He joins Ron Frisella, who is the school resource officer at Twinsburg High School. This is a very important assignment. These officers make connections with our students, with the staff, with the teachers, and the administration. They help provide safety in our school system, and I thank the schools for being a partner in this program because it really is important for all of us. With the promotion of Bob Gajewski, and Bob is sitting here today, hi Bob. The Twinsburg Police Department now has its first assistant chief in the history of the department. Assistant Chief Gajewski was hired in 1990. He was promoted to sergeant in 2006 and lieutenant in 2009. He is a firearms instructor and he is certified by the Ohio, uh, the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. He is also the Twinsburg Terrorism Liaison Officer to Homeland Security. Congratulations, Bob. I know that Chief Noga is happy to have you as second in command, and we're very excited about the opportunity to work with you in this position. And Chief Noga, thank you. That's a, a great selection for Assistant Chief. Turning now to our fire department, we said goodbye as Chief Richard Racine retired on January 3rd. He began his career as a paid on-call volunteer firefighter in Twinsburg in 1974. 
He was promoted to captain in 1991 and to chief in 1997. He built an outstanding fire department. He brought in new technology, new equipment, and he built a great workforce. So we are um, happy to wish him well in his retirement. And with that, I get to introduce our new fire chief, the third full-time fire chief of the department, Tim Morgan. Tim, could you stand up because there's our new chief, Tim Morgan. <laughs> Tim Morgan was hired as a part-time firefighter in 1991, full-time in 1992, lieutenant in 97, captain in 2003, He's a graduate of the Ohio Fire Executive Program, and he received an outstanding research award. And we're very proud to have Tim here leading up the fire department. It is a great department and outstanding employees. Chief, I know you're ready to provide wonderful leadership for them, so congratulations. Twinsburg Safety Forces excel in training and preparation. Members of the Police Department, Patrol Division, and Detective Bureau were certified in rapid response to active shooter training. And I guess that's kind of a sad training, or sad title and training when you think about it, but certainly necessary in this day and age. It included practical exercises within the schools. So um, another really good program for us to get involved in. And in the Fire Department, under the direction of Captain Steve Basso, the city's first Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT Team, was created. This is a boots-on-the-ground organization of volunteers who are preparing to respond in the event of a local or county emergency. And I, I thank these volunteers because they're giving up a lot of evenings and a lot of weekends to help out in case there's a need. So it's a great volunteer organization, and thank you, Captain Basso, for being the organizer of that new volunteer committee. You know, Twinsburg means community, and that means having informed and involved residents. And I'm going back to our green initiative again, because our environmental commission does a great job in fulfilling our goals here in the city of Twinsburg. Daisy Walker, Daisy's here today. Daisy Walker has really devoted a lot of time to the Environmental Commission. One of the programs she brought forward was the Get Caught Green Handed program. And that program was developed to encourage resident recycling. When one of the Environmental Commissioners caught you recycling, there was a, a reward for you. So that was a really nice, fun program in the city. Also, the Environmental Commission secured 55-gallon barrels from Coca-Cola and they transformed them into rain barrels. They distributed more than 80 rain barrels to residents in the city of Twinsburg, along with educational materials, talking about what rain barrels are, how you can use them, and how they help the environment. Now, these four were decorated for a raffle. Uh, the ones we distributed to the residents were not quite that festive, but uh, another great program from the Environmental Commission. You know, we believe in celebrating as a community, and this year we had a couple of really nice celebrations. The first one was the 50th anniversary of the Garden Club. And, you know, the Garden Club is one of those organ organizations that you don't hear a lot about, they don't get a lot of recognition, but every holiday season there's greenery going up around the town, and in the spring and summer there's beautiful gardens, and it's all because of this volunteer Garden Club organization. This year, they celebrated their 50th anniversary. And instead of having a great big party or a luncheon or something else, they decided to give back to the community by donating this Blue Star Memorial located at Church Street and Ravenna Road. This memorial, this memorial marker, honors past and present members of the armed services. And I thought that was such a generous thing for them to do to celebrate their 50th anniversary. I would like to point out here, the lady in the uh, little flowered shirt there is Marge Percy. And I know anybody who's lived in Twinsburg for any length of time knows Marge Percy. She was a teacher in the Twinsburg public school system and a much loved leader in the community. She was one of the first members of the uh, Garden Club and she was also one of the first members of the Historical Society which also celebrated their 50th anniversary. You'll notice here that 
In order to celebrate their anniversary, they unveiled the Twin Star Barn Quilt. Now, there is a trail of quilts across, uh, across Ohio. There's more than 300 barns that have these quilts on them in 19 counties. And now Twinsburg is one of the cities that boasts one of these quilts, barn quilts. I want to tell you, this, you can't maybe tell from the picture, but this is a big, heavy wood structure. And members of the community painted the blocks. They're all numbered, and each, we have a record of who painted each block. And they erected this in celebration of their 50th anniversary and brought recognition to us in the Trail of Quilts. So congratulations to the Historical Society for this nice addition to our community. Also, our nationally recognized Twinsburg Public Library celebrated their 20th year here at their location on Ravenna Road. And I always want to say new location because I can hardly believe that they've been there 20 years. That library has gotten is as beautiful as it was the day it opened, if not more beautiful. They continually add things. They have uh, innovative uh, uh, amenities within the library. As you can see here, the garden was one of their latest projects. This library has been recognized as one, number one in the nation several times over. And under the leadership and direction of Laura Letter, Letter, the director there, this library has really blossomed. Congratulations to Laura and the staff at the Twinsburg Public Library. Also, <laughs> Laura's here. Thank you, Laura. Also, another crown jewel in the city of Twinsburg is our Twinsburg School District, rated excellent. And Kathy Powers, here today. Thank you, Kathy, for your leadership within the school system. We really appreciate it. This is a very well-rounded school system. Besides excelling in academics, they also boast the Grand Championship Show Choir, Great Expectation, and the Lady Tiger State Championship Basketball Team, and many other wonderful athletics. Um, I can't say enough about the school system, and we're very, very proud that they're doing such a great job here in the city of Twinsburg. Another anniversary was an independent restaurant known as Blue Canyon. Blue Canyon just had their 10th anniversary. They were recognized several times over by Cleveland Magazine for Silver Spoon Awards. So if you're looking for a wonderful dinner, I would suggest that you go to Blue Canyon. Congratulations to them on being here in the city of Twinsburg 10 years. Also, kudos to our safety forces for their community spirit. We have an officer, his name is Dan Fido, and he has spearheaded a couple of really nice events here. And the first one is he gathered some volunteers from the Twinsburg Police Association to help fill a cruiser. And they participated in a program called Hunger Free Families that took place in November, right before the holidays. And just in time for the holidays, Dan Fido also rounded up uh, Dan, Dan Beato and Brian Donato. Dan is over there on the end, Dan Fido. And they participated in the Shop of the Cop program. This is the first time that we did this from our police department. They were able to take five children shopping for the holidays. So congratulations to those officers, especially Dan Fido for all the work that he did in getting that together. From our fire department, this was a first year anniversary, or first year event called Santa's Special Delivery Fire Truck. It was a great way for the department to connect with our residents and get back to the community. The kids had a great time, and our fire department had a great time. So thank you for having a lot of fun with our, with our friends and residents here in Twinsburg. I hope that you will join us this year for some of the uniquely Twinsburg events that we have to offer. The first one, our 38th annual Twins Days Festival. It will be on August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. On May 26th, we will be having our Memorial Day Parade. You can see us in this picture processing down Ravenna Road to the square where the VFW puts on a very beautiful ceremony in honor of our veterans. Relay for Life takes place on June 6th and 7th. And we will once again rock the park starting on June 13th with Stone Pony. The Josh Victorian golf outing will be on July 18th. And our Safety Forces Open House, a community event that 
hundreds of people come out for will be in October. This year, I'm rolling out a brand new event to the city of Twinsburg, and it's called the Taste of Twinsburg. This is their brand new logo, and it was designed by Marissa Jones. She's a Twinsburg senior at the high school, and uh, there was a little contest. She won it, and I think it's a, just a beautiful logo for this event. The event's going to take place on June 21st on Church Street when it is transformed into Restaurant Row. And we have with us today Jen Charlton. Jen, can you stand up for a second and say hi? She's a Fox 8 News producer, and she is spearheading the event. And with her today is Kenny Crumpton. Kenny? And Kenny is a reporter at Fox 8 News from the Kicking It With Kenny morning show, and it's one of my favorite ways to start the day, so thank you for being here today. And both of them are really going to help make this event just something spectacular here in the city. So I'd like to thank them. They're bringing together volunteers and community organizations for a fun and food-filled day. So mark your calendars, June 21st on Church Street, The Taste of Twinsburg. I also have to mention our local VFW Post 4929. This is a great big undertaking. They are bringing the Cost of Freedom traveling tribute to Twinsburg in July of 2015. So that's a little way off, but during that time, their goal is to raise approximately $80,000 to make this possible. It's a great big undertaking by the VFW. But they have a lot of help. Our employees at City Hall are really rolling out the fundraisers to, to raise money for this event. And picture here, we have Shannon Collins, our Clerk of Council, Karen Howes, our Finance Director, Angel Keith, the Assistant to the Police Chief, and they, along with Adele Nikaza, my assistant, have really been working hard to raise funds. They're getting prepared here for the Freedom 5K, and that was the first time ever event in the city of Twinsburg, but it's coming back on September 13th. So get your running shoes on, get prepared. September 13th will be the second annual Freedom 5K. They are also sponsoring wine tastings. And if you notice all the scarves that they've been knitting, they're for sale out there in the lobby. And we hope that you'll purchase something and help support the Cost of Freedom Traveling Tribute. Adele, thank you, because I know that you've been really knitting. I think you were the one that dropped them out of the so we appreciate it. You know, I have a couple special guests here today that I'd like to recognize, and the first is my mom. Um, you know, my mom has been here at every one of my State of the City addresses. This is my 15th, and she's been here for every single one. My mom's name is Stella, and she is 96. Well, no, I take that back. She's 96 and a half, and we're, we're really happy to have her here today. And I also have some... I have the youngest, some of the youngest members of our family. My grandson Joey is here today, and my granddaughter Julia. They're pictured down here, Joey and Julia. And the picture is from a, a trip we made to Washington, D.C., where the two of them, along with Matt Stauffer, who is the son of our councilwoman, Maureen Stauffer, they ran in the kids' fun run for the Marine Marathon in Washington, D.C. Um, Jean and my daughter in Missy and Maureen and several other people actually ran the Marine Book Marathon. So we had a wonderful weekend and the kids participated. Our other grandchildren are Finley, Lucy, and Harper. And they're pictured up here in their Christmas hats with Papa Jean. And Everett, our youngest grandson, and Claire. So we have a wonderful, wonderful family. And I'd like to thank my husband Jean for all his support because there's lots of long evenings and weekends away, and he's, he's always been there to help support and, and work with me. And my family for being here all the time, my brothers, their wives, my daughter, and daughter-in-law. So it's, it's just a wonderful event sometimes. And you have seen that there are so many, as I said before, helping hands and open hearts here in the city of Twinsburg. We do so much for each other, and I'm proud of that because we're more than a city, we are a community. I'd like to leave you with this quote, which I think really fits all that. It's from Anne Frank. How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. 
Thank you so much for attending the State of City Address. I would like to thank Mark Gutowski, Mark, I know he's here, there he is, Mark Gutowski, and Mitch Cooper from the MCAT Group. They helped put together the slide presentation, Jeff Cole from Cable 9, and everybody else who helped contribute and make this day special for me too. Thank you, and I hope to see you again next year.